Uh, I'm Dr. Magdi Kandil, uh, consultant uh, medical oncologist. Uh, I'm your uh, moderator today uh, for the presentation, Practical Management of Immunotherapy Toxicity in Cancer Patients. Uh, immunotherapy, and in particular checkpoint inhibitors, have led to a paradigm shift in the field of cancer care. Checkpoint inhibitor proteins, including cytotoxic T lymphocyte associated antigen 4 inhibitors as epilimumab and trimilumumab, and programmed cell death uh, protein 1 pathway uh, inhibitors as uh, pembrolizumab and nivolumab, and programmed cell death protein 1 ligand as durvalumab and atezolizumab have uh, entered uh, routine practice for the treatment of many cancers. Uh, in contrast to classical chemotherapy, checkpoint inhibitors do not target tumor cells rather than enhance activation of immune cells, particularly the T cells. They have been associated with better outcome in a number of solid and hematologic malignancies. Checkpoint inhibitors are associated with immune-related adverse events or toxicities that need carefully monitored and managed by multidisciplinary team during and after treatment. Dr. Ahuda is a senior registrar of medical oncology at Prince Sultan Military Medical City Oncology Department and associate professor of clinical oncology at Minya University will tell us how to diagnose and manage immune-related adverse events or toxicity. I would like to remind all the participants that there will be an evaluation form, so kindly fit, fill it at the end of the lecture. Also, discussion will be at the end of the lecture. Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Ahuda. Uh, good morning, everybody. Our topic today will be uh, on practical management of toxicities of immunotherapy in cancer patients. Uh, outlines will include mechanism, toxicity profile, and management. The immune-related adverse event mechanism, it can done through development of autoimmunity by releasing of autoreactive T cell or generation of pre-existing autoreactive antibodies or on target attack of shared tumor antigen on normal tissue. Uh, and can be also happen through target tissue expression of immune checkpoint, so as in cytoxic T lymphocyte antigen 4 on normal pituitary. Uh, also, inflammatory cytokine release as in interleukin 17 and colitis. Immune related adverse events are not so rare when used in combination. Uh, the most common drugs we use is nivolumab and ibilumab. If nivolumab is used uh, alone, it can, the incidence of this event it can be 7.7%. Uh, Ebilumab 18.6%. If it is used in combination, uh, the incidence will be about 39%. But this event, it is not uh, the importance of it about the frequency, but it's about diversity. Any organs can be affected. Uh, for skin, we can uh, see all the toxicities of uh, rash, uh, passing through the wrist and uh, Stephen Johnson can have encephalitis, retinitis, uveitis, uh, adrenal insufficiency, hypo or hypothyroidism, myocarditis, nephritis, gillian -Berry. So it is important to know how to manage. The management uh, includes uh, how to prevent, anticipate, detect, treat, and monitoring. How to prevent is by to inform the patient and the whole health care team and to report quickly any new persistent or worsening of pre-existing symptom. And to early recognition and the management may limit uh, worsening or toxicity the severity. How to anticipate by a baseline checkup uh, through physical examination and also the routine lab checkup. Every visit, we should go for a physical assessment of the performance status the weight, the heart rate, and blood pressure with baseline echocardiogram. And we should also assess the general symptom if there is any athenia or a change in appetite, or there is any pre-existing symptom like dyspnea, cough, rash, nausea, and headache. 
any uh, recent infection and uh, about what ongoing treatment. How to anticipate about uh, uh, this event through the lab test? Every visit we should go for general investigation, uh, CBC, uh, electrolyte, liver and renal function, and also the endocrine assessment uh, thyroid function test and the TSH with uh, T4 and T3, uh, the virology and auto antibody. The time of, on, uh, of onset of uh, immune related adverse event, especially uh, grade three and four, uh, for uh, skin toxicity, if we are using uh, combination, this onset will be uh, about five weeks. If there is single agent, it will be about 19 weeks for GIT symptom. If there is combination of NIVI and EVO, of course, it will be seven weeks. If there is a single agent, it will be on the 26th week. Uh, for endocrine, uh, for single agent, uh, it's about uh, 28 weeks. For the combination, it will reduce to 12 weeks and go on. The live uh, threatening immune related adverse event, uh, it of course, uh, pneumonitis, colitis, and hepatitis, but all uh, these uh, events are mostly reversible upon immunotherapy discontinuation, plus or minus corticosteroid. The other uh, organ can be affected uh, cardiac myocarditis. Uh, neurological in the form of guillain barre encephalitis, myelitis, endocrine and adrenal insufficiency and fulminant diabetes, hematological anemia, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, in the skin, dress and Stephen Johnson and the renal, it is nephrite. <laughs> According to ISMO uh, guidelines, uh, the management of immunotoxicity can be uh, for grade one and two, the patient mostly ambulatory, grade three and four, it should be hospitalized. Symptomatic therapy can be only effective in grade one. For grade two toxicity, we shall go for a uh, hold immunotherapy agent with, uh, and consider oral, oral steroid. For grade three, we should start IV steroid. If there is no uh, improvement on IV steroid, uh, we shall go for another immunosuppressive agent and we can use it in also grade four. Skin reaction, the sign and symptom of skin reaction, mostly rash. The rash is uh, mostly and usually macrofibular, affecting the trunk and lymph, plus or minus pruritus. We consider the case is severe if there is any fever more than 39, mucosal involvement, ulceration, rash infiltration, epidermal attachment, rash diffusion rate, bolus eruption, or no resolution under corticosteroid, or the case if presented as there is or Stephen Johnson. As management for uh, skin reaction, grade one, just the topical treatment and avoid the skin irritant, avoid the sun exposure. For grade two, we uh, consider topical steroid plus or minus antihistaminic, and also consider dermatology referral with skin biopsy. Grade three, we will go for withhold the treatment and initiate uh, oral steroid for those of 0.5 to 1 milligram per kg. Grade four, of course, urgent dermatologist referral with IV steroid in a dose of 1 to 2 milligram per kg. Uh, the endocrine adverse effects, the most common is hypothyroidism. Uh, we can know about any associated symptoms like uh, fatigue, weight gain, constipation, anxiety, anorexia, bradycardia, psychomotor slowdown, and myalgia. Of course, every cycle we do uh, assessment of the uh, thyroid function test. So through the labs, we can so elevate TSH with low uh, T4, or if there is TSH more than 10 with normal uh, T4, so it considers hypothyroidism. Uh, we consider the case uh, if uh, it's severe, if there is any impact on daily activities, or there is any cardiovascular affection. Uh, for hypothyroidism uh, treatment, if it is uh, asymptomatic, we just uh, go for surveillance and check up of the labs every cycle. If the patient is symptomatic or TSH more than 10, we will uh, start for replacement therapy with thyroxine 1.5 mil, uh, microgram per kg per day. Uh, if the grade three or four very symptomatic, we consider withhold immune check inhibitor. 
Of course, we consider uh, endocrinologist referral if there is any abnormalities in the ultrasound, uh, like appearance of nodule or autoantibody uh, positivity, and uh, if there is treatment initiation in elder patient with cardiac patient. Uh, another uh, endocrine adverse event uh, can happen, it is hyperthyroidism, and the associated symptom can be tachycardia, loss of weight, nervousness, tremor, athenia, diarrhea, and hypertension. The diagnosis can be uh, through low to SH with elevated uh, or normal uh, T4, and we can consider the case is severe if there is any impact on daily activities or there is any cardiac uh, problem as like uh, heart failure, arrhythmia, or coronary insufficiency. For uh, management of hyperthyroidism, consider in just referral. If there is a patient uh, asymptomatic, if it is uh, symptomatic, we consider to withhold the treatment and uh, we can add the anxiolytic if there is anxiety and the propranolol of cardiac frequency more than uh, uh, 90. And if uh, any cardiac problem, we consider it as emergency and referral to ICU. So through investigation, TSH, uh, we should assessment if there is uh, any elevation with uh, low or normal T4, the case is hypothyroidism. If the TSH is low with elevated or normal T4, it considered hyperthyroidism. If it is low TSH and low T4, it is hypophysis. Uh, another type of uh, endocrine insufficiency is adrenal insufficiency. And the symptom of uh, adrenal insufficiency is uh, uh, always non-specific, like athenia, anorexia, or systatic hypotension, uh, abdominal uh, pain. <coughs> Uh, nausea, vomiting, hypoglycemia, and hyponatremia. We consider the case is severe if there is uh, any hypotension, hypovolemic shock, abdominal pain, vomiting, neurological disorder, uh, ECG changes sign of hyperkalemia, and it's a severity, uh, it means uh, ICU. Uh, if suspected, uh, we don't wait for diagnosis. We shall uh, go for morning uh, cortisol check and start hydrocortisol. Uh, for hypophysitis, uh, associated symptoms uh, are non-specific also, athenia, uh, headache, visual disturbance, and uh, uh, the diagnosis uh, will be through hormonal checkup and all the hormone will be uh, hypo less than the normal uh, limit. And consider the case is severe if there is any adrenal insufficiency uh, or severe headache and visual disturbance. The investigation uh, will include all hormonal assessment, uh, morning ACTH, cortisol, T3, T4, TSH, growth hormone, FSH, LH, estradiol, testosterone, prolactin, and of course, brain MRI if there is any pituitary swelling. So as the treatment from the start, we uh, shall go to endocrinologist referral. If there is asymptomatic or few symptoms, uh, the treatment will be be hormone replacement therapy. And if there is uh, any symptom, uh, through uh, headache, visual disturbance, we will go to withhold uh, the immunotherapy and uh, to give steroid one milligram per kg. Uh, if there is any severity, it is considered uh, ICU uh, alert and to go for uh, a treatment as adrenal insufficiency. Uh, another type of adverse event which is, which is serious, it is hepatitis. Uh, the sign and symptom mainly uh, asymptomatic, but uh, we can uh, know it early through uh, serum uh, assessment of the liver function and uh, for routine checkup of AST, ALT, GGT, uh, ALP, and the total uh, bilirubin. And of course, we uh, check for these labs every uh, cycle. We consider the case if uh, severe if there is uh, coagulopathy, uh, prothrombin time factor 5 less than 50%, and uh, encephalopathy with fever and bilirubin more than 10 uh, normal uh, limit. Uh, hepatitis uh, can be managed if the patient grade 1, 2, and it is uh, ambulatory. We, shook, we check for all investigation for liver function test and uh, viral uh, serology with hepatic uh, imaging. 
uh, in grade one, just to avoid uh, hepatotoxic drug. Uh, for grade two, uh, we uh, go for uh, discontinue the treatment and uh, uh, oral steroid. Uh, if there is autoantibody appeared, uh, we should hepatologist referral with the liver biopsy. Uh, if persistent grade two or we uh, have grade three to four. Uh, grade three and four, uh, we should uh, have hospitalization for the patient. And we started IV steroid. And if uh, there is no improvement within 72 hours or worsening of the system, we uh, add another immunosuppressive agent, which is mycophenolate. Uh, another uh, uh, serious event of uh, immunotherapy, which is pneumonitis. Pneumonitis can uh, had sign of uh, and symptom of dry cough, progressive shortness uh, of breath, uh, tachypnea, and hypoxia. Uh, the case can be asymptomatic, but with only radiographic changes. Uh, and we can consider the case is severe if there is fever, chest pain, and oxygen saturation less than 90%, or there is any Disney at risk or acute respiratory distress. Uh, these changes can be uh, radiologically uh, presentation, and it can be uh, any types of uh, radiologic uh, finding. We can see pneumonia-like uh, ground uh, glass opacities, interstitial, or as uh, hypersensitivity. Uh, the management of uh, pneumonitis. Uh, firstly, we should check for uh, the general checkup, CBC. Uh, CRP, blood culture, urine test for pneumococcal, and consider sputum uh, infection screening to exclude any uh, infection. Uh, and of course, we shall go for high resolution CT with liver function test and spirometry. For asymptomatic, just only radiographic change, surveillance would be uh, enough and consider all the uh, uh, previous uh, investigation. Uh, for grade two, uh, we shall uh, we shall have uh, uh, lung specialist referral. Uh, maybe we have uh, we need the bronchoscopy with bronchoalveolar refuge. Uh, if the patient if symptomatic with uh, no oxygen needed, uh, discontinue treatment and start oral steroid. Uh, and we can discuss empiric antibiotic if there is any suspicious of infection. Uh, for grade three and four, the patient should be hospitalized. Uh, the patient uh, for this grade is symptomatic and oxygen needed. Uh, of course, we discuss uh, ICU uh, admission and uh, start IV steroid uh, bolus, then one to two milligram per kg plus empiric antibiotic. If there is uh, no improvement within 48 hours or any worsening of the system uh, of the symptom, uh, we will go for uh, another immunosuppressive agent uh, like uh, cyclophosphamide. Uh, another adverse event, which is uh, diarrhea, and we consider it a sign of uh, colitis. Uh, it can be associated with abdominal pain, uh, mucus, or blood uh, in stool. The grading of uh, diarrhea, uh, we consider it grade one if there is less than three liquid stool per uh, day over baseline and the patient feeling well. Grade two, if there is four to six liquid stool per day over baseline with abdominal pain or blood in stool. Grade three and four, more than six liquid stool per day over baseline or patient feeling uh, unwell. Uh, we consider the case severe if there is any dehydration, nocturnal diarrhea, or in uh, new incontinence. Uh, of course, if any sign of uh, bowel perforation, uh, like uh, uh, abdominal pain, ileus, or there is sepsis, fever, tachycardia, or any sign of uh, shock. Uh, management of diarrhea. Again, we should check for the general uh, investigation, plus, uh, plus blood culture and clostridium difficile toxin. Uh, if there is uh, just uh, uh, grade one, we will do, go for uh, symptomatic treatment uh, in the form of oral fluid, dupramide, and avoid, avoid high fiber lactose uh, diet. Grade two, we will go to withhold uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor uh, and to start oral uh, steroid. Uh, if uh, colitis, uh, we uh, 
uh, we add uh, abdominal CT scan. If there is persistent grade two or uh, another uh, grade three or four, uh, we can consider sigmoidoscopy uh, and plus uh, biopsy. Uh, as a management for grade three and four, the patient should be hospitalized and uh, with uh, urgent gastroenterologist referral, uh, we uh, add uh, IV steroid and if there is no improvement within 72 hours or any worsening of the system of the symptom, we will go for infliximab. Uh, now we have uh, uh, our uh, uh, case study. Uh, he is a uh, known patient to uh, us treated here. Uh, he is male patient, Mr. M.E., uh, 52 years old, diagnosed as metastatic uh, RCC, clear cell carcinoma, uh, two dorsal uh, six with uh, proximal left femur and pelvic bone. Uh, the patient uh, uh, presented to us with this present presentation. He go for surgical uh, fixation and palliative radiotherapy to spine and pelvis. Then we uh, started to him uh, tyrosine kinase, uh, tyrosine kinase inhibitor, uh, sunitinib, uh, but the patient was in uh, tolerance to it and stopped after two months. So the, the decision is to shift it to uh, another line, which is immunotherapy. Uh, combination EB plus NIVU. Uh, the patient started uh, NIVU uh, Lumab for uh, two cycle as a single agent until availability of EB. The first cycle was in uh, 27th of uh, October, uh, second one was in uh, November, and uh, third and fourth one, uh, it, it's taken as combination NIVU and EB. Uh, the last one was in uh, 5th of uh, January, uh, and the patient came to the ER uh, three days uh, later uh, uh, with uh, severe skin eruption uh, like kinoid dermatitis, bruritis, bullous eruption, uh, overlying uh, edematous pink arterial block. The patient managed in ER it's, uh, given uh, um, hydrocortisone IV and charted for him topical steroid with antihistaminic. This is uh, the picture of the patient uh, presentation. It was uh, severe side effect, and uh, the decision was to hold the treatment, of course, derma referral, and they recommended to continue uh, oral and topical steroid with antihistaminic. Within two weeks, the patient uh, uh, improved as regards skin reaction. Uh, this is after two weeks, and now the patient is completely uh, free. The patient developed another uh, toxicity of uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor, which is a form of endocrine toxicity. Uh, uh, we uh, discovered it through the routine uh, labs. Uh, on December, uh, the patient uh, T4 was uh, 1.6, TSH is 96. Uh, we uh, started toxin uh, to, uh, thyroxine replacement and, uh, of course, was referred to uh, endocrine and they advised the patient uh, to take 50 micrograms thyroxine, and uh, the patient uh, improved. Uh, there is no symptom associated with uh, uh, this hypothyroidism except uh, generalized factor one or two. This is uh, the lab uh, uh, after uh, about uh, six weeks of uh, treatment. Uh, it is uh, considered normal, T4 is 10, TSH is 4.8, and now the patient is uh, completely uh, free as regards skin lesion with uh, normal uh, thyroid function. And that's all for today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahuda, for your uh, elegant uh, presentation. And the uh, key success uh, of the management of these uh, adverse events uh, uh, is uh, the multidisciplinary uh, uh, management through different uh, uh, specialities, uh, advice, and uh, uh, combined uh, patient uh, care. If you have uh, any uh, question, well, uh, we are pleased to, to answer. And I will remind you of the uh, evaluation uh, uh, link. Uh, you will find it in the uh, chat uh, uh, box.
Any uh, question? If no, uh, if no questions, I would uh, uh, I would ask uh, Doctor uh, uh, Huda. Are you here, Doctor Huda? Yes, yes, I'm here, Doctor. Ah, if you uh, have a patients have this uh, uh, grade uh, two, you discontinued the the uh, the. Uh, uh, immunotherapy and started on oral steroids. Uh, for how long uh, do you usually uh, give these uh, steroids? One week, two weeks, four weeks? Mm, we can go for uh, tapering uh, for over two months. Yes, uh, that's very uh, important. We should not, uh, the half-life is more than, uh, uh, is around four weeks. We should not yeah give the steroids for short uh, uh, time, uh, at least for uh, uh, four weeks from one to two uh, months, and then you can uh, re-challenge again the patient with yeah, of uh, course. therapy, and if uh, again uh, becomes a more severe or uh, re repetition of this uh, adverse event. One should know that uh, the uh, severe adverse events is not uh, common, is in the range less than uh, 5%. Uh, the yeah. checkpoint uh, profile is much better than the uh, uh, chemotherapy, uh, and many patients uh, do not suffer uh, this uh, grade uh, 3 and 4 adverse uh, uh, events, and uh, mostly uh, the side effects are mild and uh, uh, manageable. Of course. Okay, I've uh, seen no questions till now. So uh, at the end, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, we uh, will conclude. And thank you, uh, Dr. Ahuda again for your uh, presentation uh, and thank uh, for all the uh, attendees. Yeah, welcome. welcome.